Hey guys, today is Saturday, September 12th. The time is 3.46 p.m. and the temperature is 19 degrees Celsius. I'm currently walking east on Dundas Street West. And just up ahead here is the foot of College Street. And I'll be turning north onto College Street. And walking the entire length of it all the way to where it ends at Young Street in downtown. The entire walk should be a little under five kilometers in total. That's the entrance to the West Toronto Rail Path. Or at least one of them. <laughs> Not such a official entrance, but you can find your way down there from here. And this is where College Street begins. It does run parallel to Dundas Street for the most part. And it is served by the 506 Carlton Streetcar. However, due to various construction projects throughout the streetcar line, there will be buses running in place for at least until the end of the year, from what I understand. And this street here is Lansdowne Avenue. To get here today from Midtown Toronto, I took the subway from Eglinton Station down to Bloor Young Station, and then I transferred to Line 2, and I took that over to Lansdowne Station, and I just caught a quick bus that dropped me off right at Dundas and Lansdowne. Which is a block in that direction. And it only took me a little over half an hour to get here. So on this walk I'll be heading through the northern part. I'll wait till that bike comes by. I'll be heading through the northern part of the little Portugal neighborhood. And just after that it'll be through the heart of Little Italy. And then we'll be entering downtown once I pass Bathurst Street and through the northern part of Kensington Market. And then I'll continue on past the University of Toronto and eventually make my way to Young Street. I did a similar walk to this about nine months ago. It wasn't narrated and it took me about an hour. So I anticipate this one might take a little longer than that, but I don't really know, <laughs> of course. So this part of College Street is a mix of residential and commercial type buildings. As you can see, there are no bike lanes. And with the combination of street parking and the streetcar tracks, it's not particularly the best street to cycle down if you're looking to go east to west across the city. And this part of the city was annexed in 1884. It used to be known as Brockton Village. <laughs> so the former town of Brockton is now the neighborhood of Brockton.
although it's more commonly referred to as Little Portugal by locals. The primary stretch of Little Portugal is to the south of here along Dundas Street, and it does go down as far as Queen Street. And technically, I don't think it starts until the next major street up here, which is Brock Avenue. And along the whole way, it's mostly intersected by low-rise residential streets, a lot of semi-detached and detached houses. And there's a lot of very nice tree-lined streets. Most of the housing stock in this area is quite old. And the area I'm heading into which would be Little Portugal and then Little Italy is quite renowned by foodies in the city. If you're a fan of this channel or you've watched my other videos, you know I'm not much of a foodie <laughs> based on my choices. So I'm probably going to walk right by a number of great establishments and not even acknowledge them. So I apologize for that. This is Brock Avenue, which I presume is named after James Brock. We used to own most of this land back in the early 1800s, and I think that's who Brockton Village was named after. So this part of Little Portugal should run until Dover Court, which is several blocks to the east of here. And then shortly after that, we'll be entering Little Italy. I talked a lot more about Little Portugal in my video that went along Gundas Street West. So if you're interested in hearing what I had to say, feel free to check that one out. I don't feel like regurgitating all the same information again on this walk. Well, there is a Korean church. That's the Bethel Evangelical Community Church. And using my horrible Korean that says Bad El Sung Gyo Gyo Hi. I couldn't tell you what that translates to. But it's my understanding that the and evangelical churches are a bit more hardcore in their beliefs. And I'm not aware that there's a particularly strong Korean presence in this area, so that's kind of interesting. There are a lot of Vietnamese shops. So it's good to see a lot of the restaurants and cafes doing a somewhat healthy business at least. We are still in stage three of the coronavirus reopening, of course. 
And there's a place I've always wanted to try. Lee's Sandwich. It looks like a banh mi shop. I'm quite a fan of banh mi. And these sidewalk patios that have sprung up throughout the city of Toronto as a way to serve customers outdoors look like they're here to stay at least through much of the fall months as the city has allowed them to incorporate heat lamps onto the property. Which I think is an excellent idea. It'll be interesting to see if this virus situation is behind us for the most part next year if these sidewalk cafes do come back or patios. And this is Dufferin Street. I've always kind of liked the mural over there in that building. I'm not sure if the sun is allowing you to see it that well. And as for the streetcar that runs down here normally, that's the 506 Carlton. And that'll go from the High Park Loop, which is behind me to the west. And I think it runs all the way to Main Station, which is way off to the east. It is called the 506 Carlton, even though Carlton is probably only around 10% of the entire length. I think the college streetcar would be much more appropriate. The street here is Gladstone Avenue. So this part of the street takes on a bit of a sleepy character. I also did a bike ride near the start of the pandemic that went all the way along College Street. And if you continue past Young Street, College does turn into Carlton Street. And I think I rode all the way to the end of that, or at least near the end. And that terminates in the Cabbage Town neighborhood. So if the streetcar were running, I would say it's probably a good idea to hop on it. If you want to explore the city that way, you can see a variety of different neighborhoods. Okay. 
and I've heard a lot of good things about this restaurant. It doesn't appear to be open. It's a traditional Portuguese restaurant. I'm not even going to attempt to say it. And come to think of it, I have been here before actually. I remember this dual building setup. I came here probably about four or five years ago with a group of people. And I don't remember a thing. I just remember having been there. And we probably found it just by searching for good Portuguese restaurants in this area. Like I said, I'm not really a foodie, so I'm probably not the best person to be touring around this area, but... That's okay. There's a hybrid electric bus. I read that in all of North America, the city of Toronto now has the largest fleet of battery powered buses, which is pretty cool. And despite the relatively old building stock, there isn't a whole lot of historical buildings on this stretch. I did try to look that up on my way over. But other than the usual batch of old churches, there's nothing in particular that came to mind or stood out as being particularly relevant. There will be more as we get towards downtown. I've always thought this art was kind of neat. People have mixed feelings on graffiti, but I think when it's done in a place where it's allowed and looks more like art than just random tags and crap, it's a nice addition to the city, like that area right there. There's a Kingdom Hall of Jehovah's Witnesses. So we are at Dover Court, where I think this is the end of Little Portugal. And speaking of historically significant buildings, there's the YMCA. That one dates back to 1911. And this restaurant on the corner it's quite well known in the era, or area. <laughs> I can't talk again, that's okay. I think that's another traditional Portuguese restaurant. felt like having a spontaneous meal, this would certainly be a good part of the city to just walk around and pick a place. And I have been to this place before, Alchemy. It's a good craft drinking spot. I think they also, yep, they do. They have live music on weekends. Although I think that's been suspended for now.
My Little Bike Shop. So the next major street up ahead is Ossington Avenue. I think that signals the start of Little Italy. Looks like we have some Al Runt artwork on this building. If it wasn't done by him, it's at least done in the same style as his. I just want to take a quick look. That's kind of neat. I haven't noticed that before. Our Lady of Good Counsel Caribbean Catholic Church. They got churches for everybody in this area. I'd be curious to come back here at night and just see how busy this area is. Perhaps this will be a good candidate for a night walk video or even a live stream. I think I'll do a live stream tonight. It's been a few days and the Raptors lost last night, so other than watching the Lakers and hope they lose, I'm not sure what else there is to do. And we've arrived at Ossington Avenue. So just to the south here, it's a very well-known part of Ossington, just south of Dundas down to Queen Street, part of the West Queen West neighborhood. It's got a bit of a reputation as being hipster central in the city. And several blocks to the north here is Ossington Station on line two. Whenever you see a white bicycle like that in the city, it marks the area where a cyclist was killed. And sadly, there's far too many of them throughout the city. The Daily Dumpling Wonton Company. Die. There's not too much in the way of newer mid-rise developments in this area, but there's one of them. Looks like a loft-style building. And there is Bar Isabel. I have been there. That's a well-known tapas-style restaurant. And I think I remember reading an article from 
the owner back in March or April saying they might not make it through the pandemic, but it's good to see that they're open. It's easily one of the most well-known or popular spots here in Little Italy. I don't really come here that often, but that's one that I've always known about. This is Shaw Street. You can take that down pretty much to Trinity Bellwoods Park. And what's curious is it's a one-way street, but you can go either way on your bicycle on it, so that's kind of neat. Just up here on the left is the Mod Club. I say that as I look over at a supermarket with a parking lot out front. That's an unusually suburban design. You don't see that too much this deep into the city. And I remember going to a number of Edge 102 nights. It's a local alternative radio station. They used to broadcast from here on the weekends. I don't know if they still do it. It's also a concert venue. There is another Italian enclave to the north up here, known as Corso Italia. And I think the actual Italian population of that area might be greater than it is here. This area started to get filled in by those of Italian descent in the early 20th century. It's also got a fairly large Portuguese descent and Latin presence. But these days in Toronto, it's so diverse, pretty much every neighborhood has a great variety of people of different cultural backgrounds. I don't know if this place is coming or going. It looks like it's on its way out. Maybe not. I don't recall seeing it before and the signs don't look too ratty. Maybe it's just experiencing a delayed opening. And every summer over the weekend, they do hold the Taste of Little Italy festival in this area where they close it down to traffic and the street fills up with various food vendors. It's pretty much a mini taste of the Danforth, which is the Greek town festival they hold near the end of summer every year, both of which were canceled this year. I actually much prefer the festival on this side just because it's usually a lot less busy. And it's pretty much a mirror image in terms of the food on offer and the entertainment and activities. Thank you. 
seen too many limos roaming around during the pandemic. Oh, it looks like it's taking part of a wedding. Chin building. Which traditionally hosted a number of multilingual radio stations. I don't know if it still serves that purpose. Looks like it's just a regular office complex right now. And right behind that is the Royal Cinema. This goes back till 1939. And it's currently serving as an event venue. <laughs> Not far there was Biero Volo, which is a spin off of Bar Volo, which used to be located on Young Street. And I think it's recently reopened just west of Young Street. And this here is Clinton Street. You can take this north up to Koreatown. And I've been to this place on the corner a number of times, Cafe Diplomatico. You can tell by all the people on the patio, it's quite busy. And I can vouch for their pizza, it's excellent. I think that's the only thing I've ever had there, even though I've been there a number of times. Call me a creature of habit, if you will. One thing I have noticed in the few times I've dined out this year is when you go to pay, it's prompting you for a 22% tip at just about every place I've been to. which seems to be quite ridiculous. I've always been a mind that 15%, if all things were good, is sufficient. In fact, in a perfect world, I wish they just put the final price on the menu, include the tax and the tip, and pay your employees such that we don't have to leave a tip. And I don't know if I missed it, but there is a walk of fame of those of notable Italian descent. We lived in Toronto. It's supposed to be on the north side of College Street. I've never actually paid much attention to it. So I probably <laughs> walked right by it. I apologize for that. If I haven't, I'll be sure to check it out on the way. And the next time I'm through the area, we'll take a look. Like I said, I'm not a tour guide or expert on the city. This place has some hot wings if you want.
Duff's is a chain you can find throughout the city. This is Euclid Avenue. I think this area is actually formerly known as Palmerston Little Italy. One thing I meant to point out back there was the Orbit Room, which was a bar owned by Alex Lifeson of Rush fame at 580. I forgot to take a look and see what's become of it, because apparently it closed down in March. And they blame the virus. This is Palmerston, which gets my vote for one of the nicest residential streets in the city. You can see they've got those more traditional style street lamps. I did a walk down here last year. It's just a lot of really well-kept, gorgeous old homes. And some big, beautiful trees dotting the sides. And this is pretty much where the, the really nice part starts. It runs from college up to Koreatown, which is on Bloor Street West. And the next street I'm approaching is Bathurst Street, which would signal the end of or the next major street, would be Bathurst Street. This here is Markham, that signals the end of Little Italy. And we'll be entering sort of the proper downtown area. And on the southeast corner of Bathurst and College is Sneaky D's. Which is something of a local institution here in the city. And there are rumors that that building is slated for redevelopment. And when that happens, Sneaky D's will be forced to relocate for the third time. They used to be located, I guess that would be their second location or second relocation and third location they used to be located up on Bloor Street West and then they moved down here it's a live music venue as well as just a bar that's kind of well known for its tacos
And just next to it is a venue called Nest. And it, there used to be the hideout. I don't see a sign for that anymore. The hideout was a bar and live music venue on Queen Street that relocated there. And I think they're moving to a third space. They might already be there. But that's life for those kinds of venues in the city. They're constantly under attack by a redevelopment. The one on Queen Street had to move because a Taco Bell was moving in. And here's a very popular dive bar among the college crowd, or just those who are cheap, <laughs> Bistro 422. They've got a pretty extensive patio on the back. And it's well known for its super cheap house beer. And there's the green room, which used to be located up on Bloor Street, just to the north of here, if I'm not mistaken. Sort of in behind the main street, you had to take the parking lot entrance. This neighborhood just to the south of here is known as the Kensington Market neighborhood. I have somewhat recently done a narrated walk through there. There's the Cloak and Dagger. I've been there a few times. Yeah. Is that what it is? The Hogtown Vegan. That's new to that spot. Used to be a deli style sandwich shop whose name is eluding me, but they had a location in the airport as well and the owner kind of had a fight with his landlord and he got locked out of that location and why is the name slipping my mind that's one of those things that any other day I would have been able to name I always had their Montreal smoked meat when I went there So this is Brunswick Avenue. This is the foot of it. You can take that north up into the annex. It's another very nice residential street to walk down. At least not when it's a, or when it's not a construction zone. And I've kind of stuck to the north side of college this whole walk, but I'm tempted to pop on over to the south side and take a look down on Kensington Market. But every time I walk down this stretch, I'm always on the south side, so maybe I'll just stay over here. Whenever I go back and rewalk an area, I try to do it either in a different direction or on the different side of the street. just to kind of prevent that deja vu feeling of, oh, I've already seen this video before. But that would be the main street, so to speak, cutting through Kensington Market. And that runs south down to Dundas Street.
this area used to be the place to go if you needed computer parts or hardware. Canada Computers actually had several locations on this part of College Street. There were a number of other PC shops back when I was in high school and university and I used to build and rebuild my computer, I would often come to this area. And there's Fresca. I've had many slices from there. There's, looks like some kind of arcade, and here's a VR. Arcade, so... Oh. Here's one of the old Canada Computers locations, it looks like. Or maybe... Oh, there's still... I just assumed by all the graffiti that that location was no more, but they're still operating out of there. So perhaps there's a store manager who doesn't deserve a raise this year. And this is Spadina Avenue, so just to the south of here is sort of the main street cutting down Chinatown. Spadina and Dundas would sort of be the heart of that neighborhood. I've done countless videos through Chinatown. I'm just going to stay on the north side for now. So this is sort of the southern end of the University of Toronto St. George campus. There'll be a number of university buildings dotting college along this part. And the city of Toronto certainly has very nice collection of old libraries. Welcome to our smoke-free campus. That's good to see. A 
That's the student commons of the university. And I'm not sure just to what extent the university is open this year to students in terms of in-class learning versus those that are studying from home. I think that's the official University of Toronto bookstore. I remember when I went to university, I'd always go to a bookstore just off campus that had slightly older editions of all the books for about a fifth of the cost. I always thought that was a fair trade-off. Always seems to be a, an overpriced scam in university textbooks, if you ask me. Especially when your professor is the author of them. And they release a new edition every so often and require all the students to have it. And really almost nothing has changed from the prior edition. Hopefully we'll see an end to that racket at some point. I think students get squeezed enough in the finance department. This is St. George Street on the left. It's got bike lanes. It cuts through the, the campus. That'll take you up to Bloor Street and then further up to DuPont. And on the south side, it becomes Beverly Street. And that'll take you down to Queen Street. Past Grange Park, which is a very nice downtown park. I've been through a number of times. There's an impatient driver. Oh, how dangerous was that? It's another University of Toronto building. Chemical engineering at the Wahlberg Memorial Building. I didn't go to the University of Toronto, so I'm not super familiar with all the different areas on campus, but it's so big, I doubt most of the students there are either. I think most of the students live more to the north of the campus in the annex area. And here is King's College Road, which leads to the very well-known entrance of the university. Well, there seems to be construction up ahead. You have definitely seen this campus countless times in movies before. I watched a movie last night that some of the opening scenes were filmed there. That was Tommy Boy. Another movie I watched quite recently 
It's kind of a stupid movie called Superstar. It was clearly filmed there. It kind of has the look and feel of those American Ivy League schools, which makes it kind of an ideal candidate for movie shoots. And there's the La Sonde Mining Building. This one was built in 1904. I think most of these older buildings are from a similar time period. And just up here on the right is one of my favorite buildings in the city of Toronto. That's the Stewart Building, which is traditionally home to the Toronto Athletic Club. Yesterday I did a walk through or past Casa Loma. This was designed by the same architect, E.J. Lennox. He also did the King Edward Hotel. And uh, Old City Hall as well. And a number of old buildings, which I'm not fully remembering right now. And this one dates back to 1894. So that was completed about 20 years before Casa Loma. And here's an old building that clearly needs some TLC. And just up ahead is Queens Park, where you'll find Queens Park Station. So the last time I walked down College Street, without narrating, I would have finished around now. So clearly, this has slowed me down a bit. I've always sort of loved the view of the city over Queen's Park. That's the provincial legislative building. Lately, it's been home to Protest Central. Well, there's typically protests on and off throughout the year there. But a lot of the coronavirus deniers and anti-maskers have been protesting there on the weekends quite regularly this year. And that's the entrance to Queen's Park Station. There's a look south down University, which is one of the few, if not the only, grand boulevard-style street we have running through the city. These are two-phase traffic lights, so... The expectation is that you'll walk across half of the street and then get stuck, and then complete it. there is the Mars Discovery District. It's a former wing of the Toronto General Hospital. But now it's been taken up or taken over by a non-profit corporation. I think the aim there is to commercialize publicly funded medical research and technologies. There's a number of tech startups located in this building. I think the idea is to create a lot of partnerships with the private sector.
Every time I ask someone to describe what they do here, I always get a slightly different answer, so I think it's a fairly complicated answer to that question. And the next major street I'll be passing is Bay Street. And then we'll be at the end of College Street, which will be Young. So if you're still paying attention this far into the video, thank you. I know it's been kind of a long one. And perhaps not the most informative. Maybe this was too ambitious of a walk to just try to wing with little to no research. That's kind of the fun. This area is sort of known as the hospital district just south of here. That's Elizabeth Street. Canadian Blood Services. And it looks to be the old Victoria Hospital for sick children. There's probably a plaque over there that tells you a bit more about the building. Usually when there's historical properties, you'll find that if you look hard enough. So this is Bay and that's College Park. Just to the south there. There's a retail shopping plaza, a number of new condos, as well as an office, com or office complex. And that's Aura, which I think is actually part of the College Park residences. That's the tallest residential building in the country, at least for now. I did a video through the mall in the basement of that building about a week ago. For people that hadn't been there before, I think it turned a lot of heads. That'll take you south down into the financial district. To the north, that'll take you up to the Yorkville neighborhood. If I'm not mistaken, College Park was originally home to an Eaton's department store. Which might have been the flagship Eaton's at the time. There's the headquarters of the Toronto Police. In a very civic looking building. I had to go there once to pick up my criminal background check the first time I went to Korea. And then for some reason I had to get it notarized by a lawyer. 
which is a process I still don't understand to this day because the lawyer just put a stamp on the piece of paper and then the Korean government accepted it. However, the lawyer did not verify that it was a genuine document. And he told me that wasn't part of the notarization process. I literally paid him 20 bucks. He stamped it, and all of a sudden, that letter from the police was considered valid and genuine. And that is Franz, a 24 hour diner. It's very well known in the neighborhood. That place is known for its $2 beers with its burgers. Well, it's probably an 8 or eight ounce or so glass. It's quite tiny. And this is the end of College Street. So this is Young Street. Straight ahead. See if I can fish my mask out. There it is. Let me just put that on. So I'm going to head on down to the subway and as luck would have it, I was able to do this entire trip on just one subway fare as I have returned within two hours of my initial tap on. Just look at a winner's department store. I suddenly have the urge to watch Dawson's Creek. Jumping on the northbound train. Someone made a comment in today's video asking if these were trains or subways. And the answer is both, they're subway trains. Hope you enjoyed this five or so kilometer walk along all of College Street and Toronto. There are links to my Patreon account in the description if you want to support the channel as well as my Instagram account and the PayPal donation link. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one.
Jones. Next station is Wellesley. Wellesley Station. 